I don't want to become a Christian because Christians are hypocrites. I've heard that so many times. They've sent surveys out to Christians or people claiming to be Christians, and they had them fill these surveys out, and it was basically a, a survey that dealt with your, your moral character, and come to find out there really, is, there really was not a whole lot of difference between the moral lives of Christians and non-Christians. And after all, if Christians really have been transformed by God, then shouldn't the effects of this transformation be evident in their lives? If someone has been born again and has God's Holy Spirit in them, shouldn't it be, I would say, obvious? The answer to that question is obvious. Of course there should be. Gandhi's words sum up the situation. He said, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. And there is some truth to that. And you may be thinking, the message today is going to be all about how Christians need to get their act together and start living moral lives and start showing people that they really do have God in them. That actually is not going to be my message today because I've given that message before many times. Uh, Today, actually, I want to talk instead to those who have been disillusioned by the hypocritical behavior of Christians. I want to talk today to those who have said, I don't want to be a Christian because Christians are hypocrites. That's the group that I'm targeting today. And if this is you, then I want you to, I want you to consider what I have to say today because I think, I think there's some, some very important points that you need to consider. The first thing, number one, If you're associated with a political party, and I'm not talking about any particular one, but if you're associated with a political party, then you already belong to a group that is largely made up of liars and deceivers. Why is it that so many people have no problem being part of a political organization that's filled with hypocrites, and yet they don't want to be a part of a religious group that's made up of some hypocrites? Point number two. Base your decision on the evidence for Christianity, not on the moral failures of individual Christians. Number three, most people who claim to be Christians are not. Actually, when I ask people, if I'm, if I'm out and about and I'm, I, I happen to start talking to somebody about Christianity and I ask them if they're a Christian, I would say most people would say they are. And then when I ask them what they mean by that, they don't have any idea. Just because someone claims to be a Christian doesn't mean they really are. So I strongly encourage you not to let the behavior of counterfeit Christians prevent you from becoming a genuine Christian. And this is just my my thought on this, my personal thought. I would hate to stand before Christ on Judgment Day and try and make the excuse, well, I would have became a Christian, but my next-door neighbor really misbehaved. Number four, and I'm not contradicting myself, Even genuine Christians are not perfect. Don't be surprised if Christians sometimes don't act perfectly. Christians do sin. Christians do make mistakes. Don't hold Christians to this impossible standard that the Bible doesn't even hold them to. Number five, what about Christians who aren't hypocrites? Do you know that there have been many Christians who have changed the world? Many Christians who not only have acted righteously and have walked in integrity, but Christians who have been so faithful and so brave that they've, their actions have changed the world. 